speaker is uh, Aaron Gardner from Durham in the United Kingdom, who will talk on dermal epidermal interactions in 3D culture and store markers of dermal productivity. Okay, thank you for the introduction. Um, so, as everyone in the previous talks has pretty much gone over, um, so I can skip through this, the in vivo, the DP, induces the epithelial matrix to form the hair shaft. This inductive capacity is lost in 2D culture, and as uh, Dr. Higgins showed, by 3D hanging the drop, uh, we can restore, or partially restore, uh, this inductive capacity. So, the work that I'm going to present now is the attempts of, uh, I work in Professor Yehoda's lab, it's the attempts of his lab to take this further. Um, so some of the problems that we've, well not problems, but things that we've identified that we could maybe improve on in this technique are improving the effic effic efficacy, um, using purely adult human tissues in it, and then also trying to in introduce using um, more accessible cell populations. So I think using dermal fibroblasts instead of dermal papilla and seeing if we can transition these dermal fibroblasts and give them a dermal papilla character. Um, so there's three broad aims of the work that I'm presenting today. So as I said, we're going to attempt to further restore in vivo DP character to the culture DP, and we're going to do that, or we're attempting to do that, by using 3D co-culture methods with various uh, epithelial populations. We're going to try and induce DP character into other dermal cells. So in this, in this talk, I'm going to present work about dermal sheath using transient transaction of genes, which we've identified are elevated in vivo DP, uh, and then we're also trying to 3D co-culture these dermal sheaths and seeing if that <coughs> helps restore um, dermal papilla character to the dermal sheath. And then also, a lot of the assays that you've seen in these talks, they're quite long-winded, um, you know, six weeks, seven weeks. So what we're also trying to develop is a very quick um, assay of inductiveness because we want to screen lots and lots of factors. Um, so this is just a brief diagrammatic overview of the technique. So we isolate various dermal populations um, and keratinocytes um, and culture and expand these in 2D. Um, so all of the three dermal um, cell types we form into 3D hanging drops. Um, and then these also sometimes get coated with keratinocytes isolated from the same patient. Um, and these get transplanted into a fibrin gel at, air, at the air-liquid interface. And this is our inductive method. Um, at the same time, some of these dermal sheets that we isolate, we take off transfect them with certain factors that we've identified in the DP, and then introduce them back into the double sphere workflow. Um, so this is an example of the epithelium, or our attempts to make double spheres. This is a nice dermal papilla sphere here, it's a nice tight call. Um, so what we do after three days this is formed, we add the epithelial cells into the hanging drop. Um, unfortunately, we're getting extremely low efficiency of coating. This is a good, an example of a good double sphere. Um, you have the tight dermal core and the inner dermal cells sit very tightly around it as well. Um, but we only see that maybe 20% of the time. Um, and this is an example of what we actually normally see. The epithelial cells actually stick to each other rather than sticking onto the dermal core. Um, so there's a very high variability in the coating efficiency. And it doesn't seem to correlate with any obvious factors. So donor age, donor site, or passage number none of these really seem to impact um, on the binding efficiency that we see. But this is something that we're continuing to work on and we're hoping to get sufficient numbers of high quality dermal spheres to analyze the gene signature of the, the dermal core and see if we're turning it on, uh, turning the dermal papilla inductivity markers on. And this is just some nice immunofluorescence to demonstrate um, from a good double sphere coating what we see so that the epithelium around it stratifies this is K14 um, immediately surrounding the dermal core, and then you see K10 at the outer edges. I don't know how well this is projecting on the screen, but there's a very, uh, we see early markers of um, the basal lamina forming, so this is lamina in here. And then we also see inductivity markers being switched on. So left one is nuclear located in the uh, epidermis, and there's also a very faint nuclear localization in the dermis here. Um, and beta catenin, we see. The epithelial cells immediately surrounding the, um, the dermal core have increased levels of beta catena, but interestingly, it doesn't seem to nuclear localize, um, which we're a bit confused about as to why that might be happening. Okay, so this is looking at the second strand of my project now, um, which is trying to restore DP character to non DP cells, so in this instance, dermal sheath cells. So we've identified lots and lots of factors 
um, that are elevated in DP spheres, and these are our attempts to add them back <coughs> in to the, the, the spheroid cultures. Um, so some of the factors we see do in, inhibit sphere formation, so my one and serpine two, for example, inhibit them. Um, and then what we also want to look at is to see if we were storing DP character, and this should say um, CD1, BT at the bottom, sorry, that's a mistake. So these two markers are things that we know are elevated in the DP. And unfortunately, for the, all of the factors that we've looked at so far, this is just a selection that I'm showing here of five, we're not seeing any of the factors of dermal papilla character being turned back on. But we have lots of other factors that we're currently looking at, and hopefully one of them will will turn the, turn the factors back on. Um, and so finally, I'd just like to go through this quick model that we've um, worked up in the lab and that we're very interested in. So what we do is we generate a fibrin gel containing dermal fibroblasts, and we layer adult keratinocytes on top of that. Um, and the epithelium stratifies nicely. Uh, so what we do then is we transplant our spheres underneath this epithelium, but on top of the gel. So this is just a picture showing the sphere sitting on top of the gel. And initially we designed this uh, methodology, we were actually thinking we would be able to observe placard formation on the epithelium. <coughs> we never managed to observe that through phase uh, microscopy or bright field microscopy. But when we cut the sections, what we noticed was that the spheres, um, after about seven days, they break up. So these cells here are just dermal papilla spheres in this instance. Um, but where the sphere used to exist, the epithelium has become dysregulated and you see these clumps of epithelium cells pulling down into the dermis. Um, and every time we use this with dermal papilla spheres, we saw this kind of growth. We saw the same effect with dermal sheath spheres, but interestingly, dermal fibroblast spheres didn't have any effect on it. So it's quite nicely replicating the findings that um, Claire talked about in her animal model where she saw no effect with the dermal fibroblasts. So we think this is a promising um, way to test for inductivity when we find something that we think is going to be worthwhile in the dermal sheet cells. Um, so just to conclude and go through the further work, um, there's poor epithelial binding and we couldn't correlate this with any other obvious factors. So what we're going to try and do is an attempt to enrich the basal epithelial cell population of the keratinocytes, try other cultures, so things from the hair matrix, maybe in the bulge stem cell regions, and then also hopefully try to identify a good dermal sphere market, because obviously there's interplay between the two populations. Um, at the moment we're just using morphology of the dermal spheres to assess the quality, but we're hopefully to find some molecular markers as well. Um, the transfection of the DS, we've observed crosstalk um, signaling between different pathways at the mRNA level, which I haven't presented here, but I've not seen any, any evidence of DP or inductive marker expression as of yet. So we're going to finish going through the panel of single factors that we have. Uh, if we don't find anything, then we're going to try multiple transfections and then still just assay for inductivity regardless to see maybe what the markers we're looking at are wrong, but they, they might be inductive in their own right. And then finally, the fibrin gel model is promising for inductivity assay. The dermal spheres break up in the gel in the presence of an epithelium, and the DP and the DS, but not dermal fibroblasts induce epithelial down growth. Um, and then obviously the gold standard that we're going to hopefully get to after this is using uh, an in vivo assay to see if we can get full follicle structure formation. And we're hoping to do this utilising only adult human tissues, but we haven't got there yet. Um, I'd just like to finish by thanking everyone in the lab at Durham and the collaborators at Columbia University, the Fargo Hair Institute, and the University Hospital of Durham. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this paper is now open for questions. Can I perhaps? You transfect uh, a candidate uh, reprogramming thing into the dermal sheath cell. Right? Yeah. So, have we tried to do the dermal papilla steps? Um, the second question is that what, what is the criteria for selecting those uh, candidates? So, a lot of the genes that we um, are using came out of the microarray that Dr. Higgins has used. So, some of them are ones that are elevated in the um, the dermal papilla in vivo but aren't restored in the 3D model. Some of the ones are the ones that are restored in the 3D model but that aren't present, uh, that are present in vivo but aren't restored in the 3D model. And we've just um, tried to go through and pick ones that are um, ones that are already known about involved in hair follicle induction, but then also ones that we, we identify key pathways 
where there's maybe several factors in a pathway um, coming up together and we're trying to, to build up pathways that way. Um, and to answer your other question, I've not tried transfecting the dermal papilla cells with the factors yet, but that's something that we're hopefully going to do. Um, we're using the dermal sheath as a screening population to see if we can restore character. If we find something that does do this nicely, we would hopefully then try that in dermal papilla and dermal fibroblasts. Thank you very much. That's what we're doing.